In this video, it's a Citroen GSA! Woohoo! Yeah, as you can imagine, I'm a bit giddy about this one. Uh, this is, um, yeah, a GSA. It's been off the road nine years, but um, over the past year has been um, recommissioned and is getting back to health. So um, she's not running perfectly, but um, yeah, still a, a very good example. Um, I probably should have asked more details about which spec it is um, in terms of engine, but it's got a five-speed gearbox, so I'm going to guess it's a 1.3. Although, is it's a special? Maybe it isn't. Uh, special being a slightly lower spec. You'll see it is an estate. Uh, one of the things I love about the estates is the fact that the tailgate glass needlessly curves into the top, but um, certainly a nice styling feature. Rear lights very similar to the GSA. Uh, sorry, the GS before it. Very early GSs had what was called cathedral rear lights. Then they upgraded to these rear lights, which they just kept on the GSA estate. The GSA saloon had entirely different rear lamp clusters. Um, obviously, oh, thank you very much. Donkeys like it as well. Obviously, um, there's um, hydro pneumatic suspension going on here and brakes, but not power steering. Uh, the steering is entirely manual, but um, yeah, lots of soft, soft hydraulic suspension and um, yeah, independent on each corner. We've got inboard disc brakes, air-cooled flat four boxer engine and um, yeah, have an amazing amount of comfort in a small car. It's one very noisy donkey. I think it's a donkey. Um, but um, yeah, let's take a, a more of a look around, shall we? Uh, you do like the two CVs, get a grill muff that you can put on the front to blank off the airflow to keep the engine nice and warm in winter. I quite like the way the mirror just sticks up on this weird appendage. Stein has fitted um, uh, these aero blades, which now I, I was struggling to forgive, to be honest, uh, International Amsterdam, um, even on the rear but um, needs must and they do work. Getting increasingly hard to find the um, correct type wiper blades, I must admit. Um, so um, let's take a peek aboard because the madness truly begins inside. I mean, we've got lovely blue vinyl, some slightly faded blue plastic there. But yeah, check out this. This is the um, insanity of a GSA dashboard. Um, oh dear, the sandals are in shot. Quick, remove them. Um, so, as you can see, it's just bonkers. The speedometer rotates, so the needle is fixed and the speedo is on a dial, so it goes round as you speed up. Some models had a similar rev counter, um, but um, no, we just get a clock because this is a special. And special on a GSA means bottom of the range. Uh, we've got a little fuel tank there, we've got a little eye. I wonder what the eye does. Um, but mostly it's all about the satellite controls. So um, I'll quickly take you through them. The indicators are on the side here and don't self-cancel. It's pretty much similar to the um, CX but um, if anything even more um, controlled. And uh, rotate the bottom and that's lights and uh, I think that's yeah that's your main beam on the bottom and wipers are up the top. And that's your screen wash on top. And actually, we'll do demonstrations of all these things a bit later on. Um, but yeah, you got some of these light up as well. So the indicator one lights up if I apply some ignition. And that brings that display into life. And um, there you go. And I'm sure the um, main beam one also lights up. Oh, that is like main beam. That's dip beam. Right, there we go. Important to know. Um, good times. Over here, we've got another bank of switches. Um, we've got um, a fog light up here. Hazard lights. Oh, that's deliciously inconsistent. Uh, I think that's oil, maybe? I don't know what that one is, to be honest. Um, is it an oil level check? Does something move? No, nothing seems to be changing. Not really sure. Um, Oh no, there we go. Look, we get that light on. I assume that's a good light. I have no idea. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Uh, rear wash and um, front. No, those are the front fogs. So that must be the rear fog down there. Uh, heated rear window and uh, rear wiper. And uh, we've got wash. Oh, doesn't seem to have a whole lot of washing going on. 
unfortunately. There we go. Um, earlier, the rear wiper failed to park when um, I pressed the button. So you press the button in and then turn the button off. Oh, and it is now behaving. It, it, ju it just went French. Um, heater controls are over here. Uh, we've got the man in his hat, uh, which you'll, you'll see that exact same logo in a Citroen C15. Uh, bring you in for a closer look. And we've got the cowboy boots down the bottom. Let's move that up. Yep, hidden down there where you can barely see it. There's your shoes. Um, so yeah, I want cool to the face. Um, that's the fan speed selector. Oh yeah, there we go. Actually make some noise. Despite being air cooled, it has actually got fan assist on that and then you can have hot or cold. A little glove box. Oh, that's, that's, that's a bit Fisher Price, isn't it? Uh, or maybe even Kinder Surprise. That's, um, oh dear. I might leave that down actually, um, that might be a good idea. Five speed gearbox, five on the floor, um, fairly conventional, it's not Citroen's best ever effort at a gear change, it's very mechanical. Um, the cassette player is down here where you can fill the cassette deck with crumbs. And we've also got the height lever, only three height positions, normal, raised for a bit of off-road action and then the full service mode. Um, I'm not sure how you... Um, that all the pressure out to slam it, yo. Um, it looks like you can't, basically. A uh, little cubby back here, but you know, I'll just clear my clutter out of the way. Really, really nice seats, and um, looks like something out of the future. And very light and airy, lovely perforated vinyl up here. It's the interior light work. No, no, because French. Um, okay, but yeah, you got this multifunction display going on here. Uh, excuse my fingers um, so that's the hydraulics um, if it's low on hydraulic pressure that light comes on of course it's low the engine's off um, we've got a battery warning there and um, oil pressure which you can follow all the way along to here <laughs> insane petrol if that's low then that starts flashing the choke will flash if the choke is on and uh, if the engine's running there we go that's now flashing just to really remind you, um, some other level, maybe oil level. Let's try it and see where it goes. It, it, it's just wacky. I, I like it. It's, um, yeah, ridiculous. Speakers tacked onto the side of the dashboard here. Here in the back, it's um, lovely. I actually went, ah, as I settled into this super soft rear bench. Um, a good amount of leg room behind me as a driver. I'd say that's impressive enough. Can't really get my feet underneath though you'll see there's a sort of a cross member there so can't really tuck the feet in too much but nonetheless it's comfortable enough there's a good amount of headroom i wonder if there's more in the estate than the um, hatch oh interesting and slightly random holes with um insulation sticking through we'll just gently coax that back there we go that's fine um, just in case you hadn't seen what i'm looking at um, will it focus Whoa, extreme close up. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on there. Oh yeah, something else I should point out is that the choke and the um, ignition barrel are kind of hidden all the way down here. Probably shouldn't leave the choke, uh, the um, ignition on, on fry the coil. And um, yep, yeah, pedals with chevrons on, just like in a 2CV, very similar pedal layout. Excellent for heel and towing. Um, is that bonnet releases? Yeah, ne next question is, oh, there's a bit of wire up there. Oh yeah, that would appear to be it. Felt like a coat hanger. Uh, it's, it's amazing how Citroëns are so brilliantly engineered in some ways and so terribly engineered in others. Like, like where, where's the catch? I'm probably have to press the grill six times and call it Nigel or something. No, there's another bit of bent wire here. There we go. And there we go. There is the, well, no, I won't say there is the flat four engine. You mostly can't see it. Um, dominated by air filter over here. Wheel motor. That'll be your engine oil. You can just see one of the um, tappet covers there. And the other one is beneath. Um, so you can imagine these engines are fun to work on. I say tappets, it's an overhead cam engine. In fact, we can just see the cam belt peeking out there. Um, so it's a very long belt because it has to go all the way around that one, back to the middle, and out over the other bank. So, um, 
yeah, it's um, busy old times. You see the inlets there and the exhaust comes down the bottom. So they are cross flow engines. Um, yeah, wow. So, um, yeah, you can't really see a lot. There's an oil cooler just peeking out there. Twin choke Solex carburetor, just like on a 2CV. Distributor tucked away down the back here. So not the easiest car to work on, uh, but then we've got the spare wheel in here and the jack, which you shouldn't really need to do any winding with because you can set the car to go up, slot the jack in, then set the suspension down and it should keep the car up in the air. Uh, LHM reservoir there, so that feeds the suspension and the brakes. Here are the suspension spheres. We've got double wishbones at the front and a trailing arm rear, I believe, very much like a CX. Uh, because that's what it is it's a smaller cx but with an even more bonkers engine and um, we can just see the throttle coming in there with its own re return spring that's um oh i see that's how the cable pulls it <laughs> how magnificently engineered is that well now i've got dirty fingers right drive time well 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 um before we go um we'll just um do a wiper test so i Oh, it sort of works. Rotate the dial. And there we go. The blades are a bit on the little side. There is no mist function on this rotating dial, but um, no triangle of doom and uh, just some dribbles from previous rain, I think, or maybe it's because screen wash went up on the roof. Perhaps that area isn't perfectly wiped and the pantograph wiper may have helped. You'll notice the handbrake here is this big umbrella handle. All exciting times. Right. Oh, she's a bit cold, I think. Let's give her a bit more choke. So, um, should we just do a quick suspension? lift just because we can in fact we'll leave her lifted because um, i've decided i'm going to turn around here and go back the other way down this dirt track or maybe we'll just go down this one so i found with this car oh you're, you're shaking a bit there but um yeah that's a shame because i'm getting no vibration at all here it's uncanny, it doesn't feel like I'm driving on anything other than tarmac. There's only the noise to give it away. Uh, it doesn't get smooth out if I speed up. But yeah, uncanny. Uh, I'm going to drop the suspension back to normal height. It's, um, yeah, it's just bafflingly smooth. Uh, well, obviously it's vibrating that door quite a bit. I now have no idea where this track's going to come out, so this will be fun times. So the original GS was um, launched in 1970 and took the car of the year uh, honours indicator like so. Let's check it all is clear and it immediately yeah took the car of the year honours despite coming out in the same year as the SM which was the enormous GT car. Sorry. Um, with the Maserati V6 engine but I, I guess for the Everyday family man, the GSA made a lot more sense. Um, so the GS, um, I think it was about 78, uh, 79, evolved into the GSA with bigger engines and the uh, availability of a five-speed box. I don't think the five-speed box ever made it into the GS. Um, but the original GS, of course, was actually a saloon. Yes, those are marvellous vehicles over there. Um, with um, a little lift up flap at the back so if you wanted practicality you had to go for the estate uh, the GSA was actually a hatchback so a lot more practical 
as a result. Yeah, we're okay. Got a big 20 on my rotating speedo at the moment. It's all all right. What does that button do? Oh, I see. That just tests the lights. Make sure the bulbs are working. Just in case you were wondering. But yeah, I mean, just ridiculously smooth ride. We'll go find some quicker roads to um, open her up on a bit. But the driving position is absolutely superb. So comfortable. These seats are soft yet supportive it's like um, the best ever mattress you've ever slept on um, but yeah it, just lovely cars to drive why have i not owned one of these it might be because they are not the easiest car to look after they're a bit of a pig to work on um, although you know all things are relative very hard brake pedal just like the cx and the later bx four wheel disc brakes which was very unusual on a family car in the 70s but this is a 1980s version so um, that's our priority we can go for that thank you mr van and into a bend oh yes body rolling all of the body rolling not as much as a 2cv but um, certainly more than most of its rivals one of the most interesting rivals of this car was the um, Alpha Sud, really. Which also had the um, flat four engine, independent su suspension and front wheel drive. Um, but we've had some of the craziness. And we've added rust. Mind you, G's are no strangers to rust. Uh, there's a section of floor plan, plan I think, which um, overlaps and moisture gets into that joint rots them out quite terribly now I'm now being chased by a Dodge Ram that's not what you want to see in your rear view mirror I'm gonna hope this car will turn right uh, sorry left indeed it has but we've gained another car a little Citroen C1 because uh, I want to accelerate Yeah, it's a sweet, sweet little engine. Uh, like I say, I'm afraid I'm not entirely certain of the size. Uh, I think they did a 1.2 as well as a 1.3 of this um, later engine. But um, yeah, all, all the power you need for the Netherlands, certainly. Uh, you'd have to work it a bit harder on the streets of Wales, I believe. 30 kilometers an hour. Oh. So yeah, these cars don't feel quite as radical as a CX because you haven't got the crazy Duravi, um, oh, so good over the bumps, uh, self-centering steering. It's entirely conventional steering set up on these, just standard rack and pinion with no power assist. Um, so it feels a little bit more normal to drive, but maybe that's coming from someone who already likes Citroëns. But superb over those speed humps. Bit of vibration on the exhaust there. Ultimately, certainly for British tastes, these cars were just too wacky. Indeed, the previous GS um, didn't have a wacky dashboard in the UK market. It had conventional round dials that looked like they'd been stolen from a kit car because British buyers were just like, no, 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 this is too wacky. By the time of the GSA, the French went, well, you'll either buy it or you won't. Kind of realizing that it's not just the speedometer that's wacky, the entire car is. Decent amount of mid-range shove for a little engine. And air-cooled engines don't tend to be the best for torque because at low revs, there's less airflow, so you don't design your air-cooled engine to have low down lugging power because it might not be cooling sufficiently. But fairly quiet, even though it's got an air-cooled engine. Um, so it's definitely got um, that in its favour. It's a lot quieter than a 2CV. Oh, it just floats over these undulations. I can hear the suspension working, 
but um, yeah, I can't feel anything at all. Got lovely fresh air coming out through the vents at the moment as well. That's very welcome. So um, yeah, decent ventilation. I'm not sure how good the heater is. Oh, there's a car coming. I will have to yield. They were pushing their luck. I thought they were going too quickly for a village, so I went anyway. Um, little moped towing a trailer there. Uh, you don't see that in most road test videos. It is entirely legal to drive your moped, as long as it's a feeble one, on the cycle paths here. And um, yeah, not a bad way of getting around. Right, we'll get some body roll going on on the roundabout. Oh yes. Nice high revving engine as well. But yeah, it's it's absolutely enough power for this remarkably flat part of um, the Netherlands. Although we're going up a very slight hill now. That's classed as a mountain around here. In fact, I'm getting altitude sickness already. Let's have a bit of that on the feet maybe as well. My delicious sandals. But yeah, I mean, this is one of those cars that I don't want to take this back. I would happily drive this all day. Maybe I should ask Stein if I can take it to the Citroen Centenary event and um, I'll leave Ellie here. Is that sacrilege? Am I allowed to even say that? But yeah, in terms of suspension, it's far better than the um, BX. I know some people were telling me off in the um, CX video because I talked about the later hydraulic Citroëns with their McPherson struts. Um, technically not a McPherson strut because there is um, a hydraulic displacer rather than a coil spring, but nonetheless very much a McPherson strut principle. Whereas these are full double wishbones and the ride is much softer. Some people found that, especially in the rear, the car could induce a bit of car sickness. Uh, so not everyone liked the soft floaty ride, which is why the BX was firmer, the Xantia firmer still. Um, until yeah, Citroen got to the, the point of going, well, why are we even bothering when we're making a hydraulic suspension system behave like a coil spring? We might as well just make coil springs and ultimately that's what they did. Oh, I seem to be driving onto a motorway. I didn't mean to do that. Oh well, we'll see what it's like at speed. Pretty darn good, I'd say. Oh, well, the speed speedometer reckons we're only doing 80 kilometers an hour. Not even that. And uh, I can't, can't help thinking we're doing a lot more. But. That was cheeky. There's absolutely no need for them to do that lane change at all. Reckons we're getting on for 100 kilometers an hour, maybe that's right. You can hear the engines revving a fair bit at that. But it's not unduly noisy really, there's a fair bit of wind noise, but um, nothing horrendous. But I think that's quite enough motorway. There's the VDL Ned car factory to the right. Uh, I was there very. Um, 
not very long ago doing a road test on um, oh, I'm trying to work out where to go on uh, a Volvo 440 that was the Badger oh traffic lights why do you do this to me on with the handbrake crazy times a go-go hear the chirp of the um, uh, pump kicking in there an accumulator holds system pressure but every now and then ideally about every 30 seconds um, uh, or perhaps a bit longer on the GSX you haven't got power steering um, the the pump will kick in as the accumulator needs topping up reckon we can have this BMW I've got further to travel, that's not fair. I just remember this is quite a good point for nailing it, so... Um we'll let that um, Toyota Yaris thing... I go, even, get away, first of all. I'm not sure it really is fast, but it feels it. But it's so, so smooth, and um, just check we've got no one behind us, and uh, we'll wait till there's no one coming the other way so we don't cause undue alarm. Um, but um, yeah, we're just waiting for that silver car to come past, and I'll do a brake test to show you how good the brakes are because they are um, quite impressive are you holding on yeah that's um, most cars from the 1970s don't do that she's still um, easing out of hibernation really after many years of inaction so um, not every rubber seal in the carburetor is quite at its best come on there you go Oh yeah, she's stumbling a bit now. Of course there's no temperature gauge because there is no coolant. So you do rely on, um, yeah, if there's fire then probably stop. Stop Mr. Audi. I hope I haven't shifted some muck in the tank or something with my emergency stopping. Just move the camera so you can actually get a view of the crazy rotating speedo. Um, I'll have to drive one handed for a bit or I'll keep this hand on the bottom or I'm going to be getting in the way. But yeah, there's my indicator switch. I really do think I've dislodged some muck. But there you go, you can see the rotating speedo even though she's all a bit bare, 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 bare. A thing of great beauty, I think, and very easy to read because the only number that matters is the one you can see. It is literally a digital speedometer. just that the digits are provided by entirely mechanical means it's a lovely bit of design I think you can see the mileage 89,207 kilometers so there we go that was the Citroen GSA just a remarkable car I think we are so lucky that Citroen went out of its way to do things so very very differently 
Um, not for Citroen convention. Oh no, Citroen chose a different path. And I'm so glad they did. It's just so interesting. Modern Citroens aren't like this. Modern cars are not different. They're all the same, fundamentally. Um, I really am happy that this period in time existed. It's disappointing, but going your own way, incorporating fantastic engineering, is not the way to sail success. Instead, you must make a um, Fortier or a Vauxhall Cavalier. That's how you um, actually find mass market appeal. Uh, the BX did a better job because it was more conventional. And uh, it's a shame that unconventional cars are just not accepted. People are just terrified of these things, and wrongly so. So yeah, a very enjoyable experience, a fabulous motor car, and a definite highlight in the um, lifetime of Citroen. And of course, 100 years, that's some um, lifetime as well. But yeah, for, for me, it kind of peaked here. This is peak Citroen incarnate. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Special.